Well, welcome everyone. Glad to see you all here on this wonderful day, a bright, beautiful day. I want to wish happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Uh, day to celebrate mothers today, and it's a great day to do so. Mothers, as you go to leave today, there are flowers over here on the table, so please uh, take a flower with you if you'd like. Um, I think uh, what we really are not looking forward to is having a bunch of them left over and having to plant them. So please take a flower with you. They were bought for you for mothers, so take them with you as you leave today. Uh, please enjoy the, the prelude this morning, and uh, I hope that you uh, enjoy today's service. Good morning. Please stand if you're able and we'll recite from Isaiah chapter 8, verse 11 through 17. This is what the Lord says to me with his strong hand upon me, warning me not to follow the way of his people. Do not call conspiracy everything this people calls a conspiracy. Do not fear what they fear and do not dread it. The Lord Almighty is the one you are to regard as holy. He is the one you are to fear. He is the one you are to dread. He will be a holy place for both Israel and Judah. He will be a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. And for the people of Jerusalem, he will be a trap and a snare. Many of them will stumble. They will fall and be broken. They will be snared and captured. Bind up this testimony of warning and seal up God's instruction among my disciples. I will wait for the Lord who is hiding his face from the descendants of Jacob. I will put my trust in him. This morning's anthem is titled The Wondrous News. And what better way to proclaim this wondrous news is to participate in it. So we're asking you this morning, if you find in your bulletin an insert with the song that we're going to sing, and we're asking that you participate uh, along with the choir on the verses, and it's noted there on your insert. Yeah. 
down here, Grant. I've got to show you something, Grant. I don't know if Helen's going to make it or not. Well, I don't know. But we're going to start. So what is this? A paper. A piece of paper, right? Do you, what do you think we can make with this? You don't know? Oh, a train. Well, I don't think I'm going to make a train with it. But I am going to make something with it. So if I fold this in half like this, and then I'm going to fold the ends in a little bit, and fold the other end in, <laughs> I'm not going to make a train. <laughs> Now what do I have? A tent. A tent. No, it's not a train, it's a tent, just like you said. So it's a tent, and you know who else makes tents? All of us. All of us? Yeah. Well, we could out a piece of paper like this, but I don't know that we could sleep in these or that they would provide us a lot of shade. But we're going to talk about a lady today named Priscilla who made tents. Do you have a tent at home? Nope. nope. <laughs> have you ever slept in a tent? Nope, I haven't. No. You haven't? Uh, have you ever been to a store that had a big canopy over the top out front? What? You know, you go to a store and it has this big awning, a canopy out front? Mm -hmm. So tent makers make those too. And so maybe Priscilla made some of those. But we have a tent, and she makes tents, and guess who else makes tents that joins her to, as, as uh, she does tents? Besides her husband. Her husband helps her. Her and her husband make tents, but who else? Do you think? Any ideas? No. The Apostle Paul was a tent maker. So the Apostle Paul made tents, and he joins them in making tents and making awnings so that the the vendors would have a place to put all their goods and keep them out of the sun and provide shade for all of the shoppers. And so Priscilla was um, evidently very good at tent making because she did this in several different cities. And we're going to talk more about that later. Okay. So I'm going to let you go back and sit with your dad. Our next hymn this morning can be found on page 650 in your red hymnal. Give me the faith which we can remove. Please stand if you're able.
This morning's scripture reading will be coming from the book of Acts, chapter 18, verses 1 through 4, and then I'll continue on in Romans, chapter 16, verses 3 through 5. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. Continuing on now in Romans. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus. They risked their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. Greet also the church that meets at their house. So as I mentioned in the children's message, we're going to talk a little about Priscilla today. As we continue our, our sermon series on women of the Bible. And as I mentioned, and as we heard in the passage uh, from Acts 18, she was a tent maker along with her husband, Aquila. And they had a shop set up to, uh, to make tents, to make um, canopies, to, to go out over storefronts. And as Paul come into Corinth, they uh, met up and Paul decided to stay with them. And this is really where we're introduced to Priscilla, and we are told that her and her husband fled Italy because the Emperor Claudius had decreed an order that all Jews were to leave Rome. Now, there's some suspicion as to whether this was a truly enforced order or not, because sometimes, as we know, even in our, our day today, Leaders sometimes impose new orders, new directives, new laws to appease a certain group of people, but really have no intention of truly enforcing them. Now, on the other hand, maybe they, it was really being enforced, and that's why they fled to Corinth. At any rate, when Paul comes into Corinth, meets up with them and, and stays with them, this is where we're introduced to them. And then the passage in Romans is really the last thing we know about them. But there's some things that happen in between. And what we see if we continue reading in Acts 18 is that Paul stays in Corinth for about a year and a half. And he stays there with Priscilla and Aquila. Now, what we also notice in the first introduction of them is that Luke introduces Aquila first as the husband. Now, one thing we need to understand about Luke is one, being a, a doctor or being a very learned man, he was also very specific about how he wrote. And he followed all of the, the proper uh, means of writing. And so he would have put the more important person first. And so when he first encounters Aquila and Priscilla, he lists her husband first. After all, it's a patriarchal society. And so he lists her husband first. But it doesn't take long for Luke to reverse the order of the names. And he starts listing Priscilla first. And in fact, as we saw in the writing of Romans, Paul also lists Priscilla first. So what does this mean? Well, it means that Priscilla became the more important of the two, which changes how we look at the rest of the, the passage. And as we look at the rest of chapter 18 in Acts, you see, Paul stayed there and for a year and a half, Priscilla is able to garner information from Paul, to ask questions to sit at his feet and understand more about what was going on with Jesus and what happened and how Paul is trying to work about uh, planting churches. And Priscilla and Aquila host a home church. Priscilla gains enough knowledge that when Paul leaves from Corinth a year and a half later, he travels to Ephesus and Priscilla and Aquila go with him. 
And at that point, Paul leaves them, and Priscilla and Aquila are left in Ephesus, more or less on their own. Likely they sent up another uh, tent-making business. What we do know for a fact is they set up another house church. And so Paul maybe left them so that they could set up a house church and continue the mission that he was on through doing the teaching and the preaching themselves. And because of the change in the sequence of the names, it is almost certain that Priscilla did most of the teaching and preaching. And we also know that if we look there toward the end of chapter 18 in Acts, that Apollos comes. He comes to Ephesus. He's a native of Alexandria, Egypt. He's a very learned man, known to uh, be very learned in the scriptures, and he's preaching powerfully about the scriptures. Priscilla and Aquila go to see him, but they realize that something's missing. And they invite him to their home. And Apollos comes into their home and they explain the ways of God more adequately. In other words, what they did is they asked Apollos, well, what do you know about baptism? And he says, well, I only know John's baptism. So they explained to him the baptism that Christ commanded his apostles in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 which said to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. John, or Apollos didn't know that because John's baptism was a baptism of repentance, not a baptism for eternity. And so Priscilla sits down and, and teaches Apollos this new teaching, this something that he didn't know. And likely because Apollos spent time with Priscilla, and, and her husband, Aquila, he goes on to be a very powerful preacher and continues preaching at the churches throughout the region. And he continues and helps plant churches and helps bring people to Christ. But he could not have done that solely on what teaching he already had. He had to have that additional teaching that Priscilla would have given him. We also see that Paul tells us that Priscilla and Aquila risked their lives for him. Now, he doesn't go into any great detail. We don't know exactly what they did. But knowing Paul's life and seeing his journey and the various encounters that he had, it's very likely that they either hid him away so that he wasn't uh, found by people who were looking for him to do harm to him. Perhaps they helped him escape an angry mob, or perhaps they stood and gave witness on his behalf to keep him from being harmed. In either case, Paul says, not only am I thankful for that, but all of the churches here are thankful for that as well. Now, again, we don't know if Priscilla and Aquila stood up for all of the churches or by the mere fact that they stood up for Paul, Paul was able to continue to do what he needed to do without harm. What we do know is that Priscilla and Aquila ended up going back to Rome. Now, we don't know how long that was, but they had been in Corinth when they met Paul. They traveled from Corinth to Ephesus with Paul. They were there for a few years and then went back to Rome. How do we know that? Well, the passage in Romans tells us that Paul knew they were in Rome because he writes to the church in Rome and tells them to go greet Priscilla and Aquila and the church that's in their house. So again, they have set up a church within their household. Now, that may sound a little confusing to us, and we do, we do know that oftentimes in the New Testament we see where they, the, the believers met in households. But in large cities like Corinth and Ephesus and Rome, they were so compact 
with people. They were so crowded with people. And they had apartment buildings. And we may think, well, that sounds odd. 2,000 years ago, they had apartment buildings. Absolutely, they did. And in some cases, they were four and five stories high. And so oftentimes, these apartment buildings were built in such a way that the lower floor, particularly the, the, the section that faced the street, were shops. So it's very possible that Priscilla and Aquila had set up their tent making shop on that lower floor of an apartment building and had made their own awning and perhaps that was one of their advertisements to show the work that they did. But also these apartment buildings had multiple apartments in them and they often had a little courtyard in the middle. And so Priscilla and Aquila likely held their church services in this courtyard in the middle of the apartment building. And oh, by the way, because people typically walked wherever they went, these churches were usually neighborhood churches. Only people that were within walking distance would come. So in other words, like, you know, we wouldn't have people here today that drove all the way across town or maybe even from out of town to come in town to come to service. It would have been only those within a three or four block radius that would have walked here to come into service. That's what Priscilla and Aquila would have encountered. And likely, because they kind of congregated together, lived together, those of the same belief system or at least those that were willing to, to associate with people with that belief system, they could have reached out and drawn people in from three or four blocks. Imagine this, though. In a patriarchal society, Priscilla is the teacher and the preacher. She's the one that they're coming to listen to. Now, that doesn't mean Apollo or Aquila didn't support her. It doesn't mean that he didn't chime in from time to time. But knowing that both Luke and Paul listed her first, she would have been the most important of the two. I don't know about you, but sometimes I still do that. And I actually, I try to pay attention to that. And I try to make sure that if I'm addressing people, I address the most important person first. So in other words, if I was addressing a corporate meeting, I would address the CEO first, and then the directors, and then the rest of the employees. It's kind of formal, but at the same time, that's who Luke was. Luke was a formal writer. He was specific about how he wrote. So that's how we can know really, without a doubt, that Priscilla was the more important of the two. We also can know, based on some of the actions that she took and what we see in Scripture, that she was a faithful woman. And she was someone who had learned a lot. It was not common in that day for a woman to be well-educated, but it's obvious that Priscilla was well-educated. And it was also obvious that she had, uh, she had a desire to share the news of Jesus Christ. She was willing to put her reputation as a well-established uh, well tent maker on the line in order to tell people about Jesus. And obviously she was a pretty courageous woman because she helped Paul and kept him and she risked her own life for him. She was one that was willing to go about doing what God had called her to do. She was one that was willing to go where God called her and to conduct the mission that he had laid out before her. So she went from place to place to place, teaching and preaching about Jesus. And when needed, setting someone straight, such as Apollos. We can learn a lot from Priscilla. And I think one of the key things that I see, for me personally, is being willing to go where God is calling you to go. 
And sometimes that can be very, very challenging. I know, as, you, as most of you know, uh, having retired from the Marine Corps, I traveled around the world. Sometimes going where you're told to go is not easy. But God calls each of us to go to different places, and sometimes it just means going next door. But sometimes it means going across the sea. And I've done that too by going to Romania and doing a mission there five times. It's a lot of good work, and God calls us to go and do different things, and each of us may be called to go and do different types of mission work, as we might call it, evangelistic work, as we may call it, but it's simply telling people about Jesus and telling what he has done in our lives. Because we don't need to hear the shoulda, coulda, woulda. We need to hear how has he changed your life. And that's more compelling than telling someone you should do this. Rather, tell them this is how he's changed me. That's our challenge this week. Go and do those things. Tell, t tell about Jesus. Tell your story of how he's changed you. If you would, bow with me in prayer. Almighty God, we ask that you ask that you be with us, that you guide us. We ask that you would tell or show us where you would have us go. Fill us with your spirit and help us to tell people about how you have changed our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand and join in our next song, a servant song. It can be found in the Faith We Sing booklet, page 2222. Much of what Priscilla and Aquila, we are called to work for God. Sometimes the call is to perform physical labor, sometimes spiritual prayer, sometimes to serve within the church. At this time, we are given an opportunity to contribute to the works of our local church. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we're thankful for your rich blessings. We're thankful for this opportunity to give back a portion of what you have blessed us with. We ask that you bless this offering, that you bless each and every person who is here today, and we ask that you bless those who will make decisions on how these funds are spent, that they may be spent in a way to expand your kingdom here on this earth. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Concluding with our scripture reading this morning, it will be reading from the book of Acts, chapter, or chapter 18, verses 26 through 24. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke the great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. You may be seated. Please bow with me in prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise for simply waking us up this morning, for blessing us richly, for giving us a beautiful day to celebrate all of our mothers. God, we are thankful for each and every one of them. And God, we know that there are many amongst us that have various ailments recovering from surgeries, facing surgeries, or perhaps just have injuries that need to be healed. We ask that you grant healing, that you remove pain, that you bring each and every person to a full state of health. And God, we ask that you be with our brothers and sisters around the world, and especially those who face persecution. We ask that you give them strength and courage to continue to be people of light to shed your light in this world. And God, we ask that you continue to be with those who are fleeing Ukraine and facing war. We ask that you bring about peace, that you bring about a restoration of that country. And God, we ask that you make it boldly known that you are in the midst of all of it. Again, Lord, we thank you for all that your son, Jesus Christ, has done for us for coming here, for living a life, for sacrificing that life for us, and for raising again on the third day and ascending to you, be at your right hand. Be with us now as we pray the words that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As you go this week, go to do what God would have you do. Go where he would have you go. Go to tell people about Jesus. Amen. Um, Roy, you want to go ahead and come up? While Roy's coming up, I'm going to make two other quick announcements. He's going to make one here in just a minute. Uh, one, very excited, Tuesday evening at 5 p.m. at Calf Town Cafe. Dan and I will be there to um, do a short kind of informal service. It's going to be about an hour long, but we will have music. We'll have some discussion slash message. Uh, but it's a good time to invite friends or family that maybe don't want to come into a church building, but come and listen and hear a little bit about God, hear a little bit about Jesus. So Tuesday evening at 5 p.m. The other thing is, is a reminder that if you have not gotten yourself a reservation, an appointment made to get your pictures taken for the directory, um, those are going to happen Tuesday and Wednesday this next week. So either go online as, as uh, uh, we have uh, information on the various bulletin boards that you can do. I know Barb has been calling people, so please answer the phone if she calls you if you have not made an appointment. Um, and, or the other option is you call me 
and uh, we, we had some shortage of appointments. I was able to contact the company and we were able to get some additional appointments added in late Thursday, so now we, we can make some additional appointments. With that, Roy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, that music up there, wow. Well, I'll make an announcement about something that I, uh, this Memorial Day, anybody out there that's got, know the veteran. And I would like you to invite a veteran to come to our church because I'm putting on one heck of a breakfast for Memorial Day. So it's coming, and God help me that I will see Jensen Hall full. So circle your calendars, breakfast on me for Memorial Day for church members and a veteran that I would like for you to bring. Thank you. Thank you, Roy. With that... Go in peace this week.